After three betas and early access, Marvel's Avengers launched on September 4th. Today is November 4th, but still, after two months, bugs and glitches persist. Glitches profound enough to erase all progress, reset resources, lock previously unlocked content, and halt progression altogether. For a game that puts all its eggs in its single player modes basket, you'd think that it would come with an option to replay it, or at the very least, not take two full months to implement the ability to replay this $60 game. Then again, with only two villains, no Marvel locations, poor communication, no roadmap, and stupid decisions like making two archers the first choices for DLC heroes, it's clear that this game is in a losing fight with itself. Scott Amos says that Kate Bishop was originally going to be in instead of Black Widow. Not surprising, coming from the insane man that thinks that Marvel fans want biomes instead of locations. And it is out of touch, little brain mentalities like this that instantly doom this game to its current state. It's wild, you knew you needed the Avengers name to sell this mess but you deliberately choose to alter and sidestep the history that made it what it is? Add to this your unwillingness to commit to the games as a service model that you made the choice to put this into, and people are actually praising your single player? Well, if, if they've played no other games in their life and they love this, they are entitled to that, but me? An awkward loot and skill progression system in a game where the characters won't shine until well after the story mode, you're ending the game with characters like level 12, when they don't get dope until 50, when the loot doesn't matter until you're way at the end of the power level here. Countless standing in a zone exercises, Iron Man flight sections where I'm aiming at a circle. The Avengers are all just dumb background Great characters job, because this is really a Barf Mala story. How much it pisses me off to see these intelligent men of science working around all of this exposed circuitry with nothing in the way of protective fucking gear for their hands. What kind of stupid shit am I looking at? You know what I mean? Hulk maybe, but, but Stark. But we should just love Kamala because she's written to guess correctly. Your password was I am Iron Man. Really? Huh. Thought I'd change that. Yeah, Tony, you so dumb. Only Kamala smart. Scour the earth. You will not find our lab. Scour the earth. You will not find our lab. Scour the earth. You will not. Scour the earth. Scour the earth. That's it. Of course, the satellite. Oh my god, Kamala so smart. My favorite part of the story is when Kamala damsels herself like the moron she is and needs to be saved by an actually strong woman. A woman so capable that she can dance among superheroes without powers. Black Widow is a core member of the Avengers, and if Scott Amos and his out-of-touch Seymour Skinner ass had his way, he would have replaced her with Kate Bishop. What do you say about things like that? These people don't understand what they're working with. Any and all success that this game can claim it owes to the Marvel name, a name Crystal Dynamics refuses to put some respect on with this disgraceful, embarrassing delivery of agenda-heavy garbage, telling a story that's been told better before with the X-Men, and thank God they're not in this, I wouldn't want them poisoned. But just like Star Wars, the only way y'all know how to elevate certain characters is by bringing the other characters down, and it says everything about your piss-poor writing. No thanks. A sure as hell ain't the only one who mirrors that sentiment. And while I'm on respect, the player base dares you to release a Black Panther without comic book identical skins. I dare you to disrespect the character Chadwick so charismatically portrayed by making the broke-ass, no-tech, armor-plate-wearing Hell's Kitchen version of Black Panther the default? Tell me this is a concept that hit the cutting room floor. Tell me that this is really like a Killmonger I'm looking at. 
instead of you deliberately refusing to choose literally any version that people would know and love because you're so allergic to what works? So what are you, what are you gonna reduce T'Challa from his role of king of Wakanda? He's not gonna be king in your narrative. Is it is this because it needs to be a woman? It, or are you planning to clumsily try to tell the awkward story of how T'Challa becomes king in your game, what, over the course of the next 10 years with the six people working there? Stop. You know what people want. You're actively avoiding it. The, the desires of the player base are like minds to you. What you need to have done is focused on replayable multiplayer modes to retain players' interest. There aren't enough of you working on this to produce content regularly enough to focus on one and done single player story missions. Patrol mode, payload, flight missions, even harm room challenges where you can fight bosses and overpowered heroes. This is the type of shit you should have been working on instead of releasing a game so early that it's taking you two months to bug fix. You're delaying this, you're delaying that, you have postponed the next generation launch of your game. A single player you can't replay, difficulty levels with no reward difference, rare items with better stats than exotics, so a looter with bad loot, emotes but no emote wheel, a Marvel game with two villains and no locations, a Marvel shop with no MCU or comic book skins in it, it's, it's just poorly planned. It's unfinished. And I'd compare this to a college project, but that would be disrespectful. It's more like a high school deal. Like you're not meant to look at it from more than one angle. And even from that one angle, if you scrutinize it properly, good God. Recently I mentioned how Captain America's shield in this game was needlessly redesigned. It's an irrelevant change on its own. But contextually, it's a microcosm of a game that's trying far too hard to be different from the 80 plus years of what has made Marvel a household name, and even with all the bugs and glitches and failures of this game aside, you can't deliver in even one capacity. I ask you personally, listener, if you were granted the Marvel license to sell items, would you try to secure the movie likenesses before or after you started producing and selling your product? Did you pick before? I raise my glass to you. Let us celebrate. Cheers to functioning brains. You see, that's the opposite of what this game did. Marvel's Avengers handlers are trying for a movie likeness agreement now. Well after the peak attention that this game is likely to ever get, unless it relaunches next generation with actual locations, modes, way more villains, heroes. In a recent play with the devs live stream, this was said. I want to answer a question already. So MCU skins, we're talking about it. That's a maybe. So just to answer that one, I know it gets asked. Much to the shock of this girthy, throbbing king of a man who chose to pierce through the beta energy of an otherwise depressing stream. And I know a thing or two about depressing streams. Subscribe now. I try to remain conscious of the business perspective of things and considering this whole games as a service model is just a fancy way of saying keeping players invested enough to justify throwing money after skins and emotes and takedowns or whatever they're called in this game. But Marvel's Avengers has a desert for a shop. So pathetic an offering of almost comic book skins apparently designed from a half forgotten memory. Costumes so religious and knockoff feeling that you'll paradoxically wish that the Chinese developed this game. At least when the question is asked over there, which skin would people like more? Instead of appealing to some Twitter activist whose personal insecurities need to be injected into everything they're working on, they'll just make the choice that this skin is better. Overpriced even at $14, these skins in this $60 game aren't good. None of the skins are tempting because they might actually have gotten away with this otherwise. If you'll allow me to grant some perspective, 
The upcoming Spider-Man Miles Morales incorporates an identical skin from the popular movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. If this wasn't enough to excite fans, then observe that the frame rate of the animations while the suit is being used have been tweaked to better represent the character's movement from the movie while in the game. Ice this cake with the ability to transfer this effect to any other skin or disable it entirely. And this is just a showcase of exemplary work worthy of cash money from people who, no exaggeration, would love to buy a game like this just to swing around the city. Chef's kiss. The phrase here is attention to detail. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If this game's default designs were deliberately made to be ugly or abnormal by design to urge or force some players into purchasing better skins, I'd regard this all as genius. But there are rarely any better skins on offer, and the ones that are available are lazy, palette swaps, recolors. So lazy that I'm convinced they're designed by angry Marvel haters who for some reason regard the art of people coming before them as racist or sexist, with the irony being that excluding the art and creation of someone because of their sex or race is itself sexist and racist. This game's designs act like women with big breasts are, are not beautiful or shouldn't exist. How inclusive. And here's my favorite. Are leotards inherently sexual to you? Why are you redesigning Ms. Marvel? Even Square Enix recognizes this outfit as simply something traditionally worn that athletes can easily maneuver in. Are you the types of developers that are so triggered that you're rushing out to put towels on a gymnast? How absolutely oblivious would Disney, Marvel, or whomever would be signing off on this deal need to be to actually grant the movie likenesses to this floundering, confused game? This is what the player base looks like, and this game deserves it. With the allergy for communication that it has with its player base, the absent roadmap, the propensity to ignore all real questions that the players pose, and even a journalist is willing to ask you, it won't be enough. I told you, it won't be enough. You know why Genshin is winning? And why games like Genshin will continue to win if studios like these don't change? Because agenda will never come before what will sell. If a pretty waifu and a fun game sells, I guess they got you beat. Genshin after Adventure Rank 30 does slow way down. And the grind that becomes clear is necessary to enhance and level your character really shows you the, the pay for shortcuts model that the mobile game that it really is has to offer. But up until Adventure Rank 30, was the game fun? Is it complete? Does it have crossplay? Is it constantly updated with new gear, new locations, new characters? Is it rewarding? Especially when you're unlocking things that other people paid for for free? I'm pretty sure it is. And what I keep asking myself is, if they made this game but it was Marvel flavored, would I pay for heroes? Pay for badasses like Ghost Rider, Punisher, Daredevil, Wolverine. Pay for jiggle physics waifus like Jean Grey, Storm, Scarlet Witch, and Susan Storm. It's not, it's not a problem to like something. And it sure as hell isn't a problem to like something that you're willing to pay for. So, y'all could have been on the end of this where you were making a fat stack off of people and their willingness to get involved. But I guess you were too scared to commit. Here are the facts on Marvel's Avengers after two months. Even if support lasts, there are too few people working on Marvel's Avengers to see it transformed significantly soon. Even if the game paid streamers and dumped juicy, identical skins from the movies and the comics, this game has no modes to retain a large player base. 
This product is so far from functional that the time that should be going to better content will instead be spent getting it to where it should have been at launch. In a world where everyone can stream and showcase just how broken, boring, unsatisfying and unfaithful this representation of a universe is, especially when so many more satisfying alternatives are on offer, people won't just choose the other for now. They will indefinitely make a choice and forget this one. Man, somebody send me a PS5, get me Spider-Man. I would rather be known as a hater for speaking the truth than be a fake ball gargling shill only telling half the story the half that makes the company look good and then hustling viewers and players to send you their marvel clips so that you can monetize them lejeune oh my god this is who marvel's avengers promotes the war table's coming soon i can't wait to see how the shills overreact i can't wait to see how crystal dynamics pretends people give a shit about archers when they know what we really want but most importantly i can't wait to document the journey of this game i'm doing that one guy's job for him the death of a game detective but most importantly i want you to subscribe to me if you want to experience this journey with me and if you're brave enough to keep playing this game back up your save and thank me later month two